Hello, everybody. We are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. It is Monday, September 24th. I'm Paul Wontora. I'm Beth Stevens. And over there, we have Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And Beth, today we are we have a very special guest. Hard to book. Hard to get this person in here. Mm -hmm. But we finally, finally secured. We got him. That's um, right. Nor, he's never, never been anywhere near this show. Ryan Lee Gilbert, <laughs> who is, of course, one of our yeah, um, co-hosts. What are co-hosts? Co-hosts. Co -hosts. What, 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 what You're going to say co-stars. Uh, the co national editor of Broadway.com. It is his anniversary today, and we are going to talk about that because we like to um, shine a spotlight on... Our fantastic staff. I was going to say our co-stars, but Or sure. co-stars. Yeah, our fantastic Whatever you staff. Say. <laughs> so we're going to talk to Ryan, but first, today's top five. The full cast is set for this West End revival. So... Remember Carolina Change? Of course I do. Okay, I'm glad Remember to that hear that. Year? Remember I that do. Tony race? That, okay, so on Broadway, that was 2004. Wicked. And it was Wicked. Avenue Q. Avenue Q, go mm. on. Um, taboo. Taboo. <gasps> Threw that one in. And Donna Murphy fun. was in Wonderful Town. And then Town. Wonderful Town was oh, happening. Cool. It, was a, it was a big year. That's there was a documentary about it. That's true. That's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about the revival <laughs> of Carolina Change. In the West End, starring <laughs> Sharon D. Clark. The rest of the cast has been announced. Uh, some notables, and of course, this is Tony Kushner and Janine Tesori, yes. which you already know. Right. That's who wrote it. Mm -hmm. Lauren Ward, Tony nominee Lauren Ward, wow. will be in it playing uh, Rose Stopnick Gelman, mm -hmm. originated by Bian Cox. On oh, Broadway. Yeah, she's and not playing a, an appliance, she's playing she's a human. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, Abi I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Abiona Amo Amonua. Abiona Amanua that will be playing cool. Emmy Thibodeau, which of course Anika Noni Rose won a Tony Award for playing yes, that she role. Yes, she did. Uh, this um, waiting for the bus, wasn't she waiting for the bus? <laughs> Shoot, do you want to do any? Do you want to do I'm a little sorry, number? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Michael Longhurst is directing. We're just cracking ourselves up. This was at the Hampstead Theater. Now it's going mm -hmm. to the West Who's End. Who's playing the washing machine? It, it's not listed. Or here the radio? There's sheet. a radio. There's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the musical will play at the Playhouse Theater beginning mm -hmm. November 20th through February 9th. We've got to go to London. I need to know about more appliances next time. Okay, I'll, I'll work on that. We'll work on it. And a stage alum is returning to the New York stage. Hi, Deborah Jo Rupp. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, so the cake is Becca Brunstetter's play. This has sort of been making the rounds, right? So it, I know it was done up in the Berkshires mm -hmm. um, at Barrington Stage Company. It was at the Geffen Playhouse. This is a play that's sort of a jump off of the issue of bakers not wanting to make gay wedding cakes, correct? Uh -huh. that, mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with gotcha. here. It is the cake. Uh, she's playing the role of Della, and um, she's an Emmy nominee, and mm -hmm. she originated the role in these other runs, mm -hmm. and it's at MTC. It's directed by Lynn Meadow, and it starts February 12th ahead of a March 5th opening, and it's only running through March 31st. So get your tickets now mm -hmm. for the cake. We had pie today in honor of Ryan's um, anniversary. <laughs> yes. but and this is off Broadway, cake. right? This is cake off Cake or Broadway. pie. It's your choice. And the stars of their playing our song are coming back together. And no, I'm not talking about Taylor Swift. I don't even know what that means. Don't but hey, hey, oh, they're no. playing anyway, our <laughs> song. Oh, they're playing our song. Okay, so don't we love when original cast members come back together? I love a I, reunion. We love a reunion. <laughs> this is Lucy Arnaz and Robert Klein. We'll return to their original roles for the Actors Fund, which is a worthy cause. Uh, this is the 1979 Tony-nominated musical comedy. Mm. 40th anniversary. Can you believe that? I'm what having a moment be? because the Actors Fund did a, they were playing our song thing previously with Sutton Foster and Seth Rudetsky. Well, they weren't the originals, They though. were not. They were not. Anyway, uh, thank, you for, thank you for interjecting. Sorry. Uh, Chet Walker will direct Larry Blank, will musical direct, and this will take place at the Music Box Theater on February 11th at 7.30 p.m. Oh, it's not till February? Oh. Well, it's, yeah, it's a 79 show, so it has to be in 2019. I just listened to this entire cast album. Did you know Donna Murphy also made her Broadway debut? And hey, hey, they're playing our song. <laughs> Look well, up the Tony it. number. Look up on YouTube the Tony number. It's so good because they're playing his song, then they're playing her song because it's about two songwriters that fall in love. I love it. It's so 70s. Aww. I love it. <laughs> And we got another inside look at this exciting upcoming musical that Paul loves. <laughs> well, I love King You're Kong. King Kong. King Kong. I'm it's very true. excited about King Kong. I love the story of King Kong. Chris, I love Christiane Pitts. Mm -hmm. uh, and I asked her when I, she was in our fall preview. We did. Yeah, that was a gorgeous some piece. Gorgeous mm -hmm. photos that Kit McNaney took of her. Uh, she's quite stunning. Um, and we, uh, I asked her every time. I said, "Have you been in King Kong's hand yet? Has that happened?" Well, now it's happened. 
Fish you can look it. at it on the site. There's video, behind the scenes video, and a fantastic photo sort of showing you how epic um, this beast will be. And uh, it's a really interesting sort of peek at King Kong. And when do performances start? October 5th. Next week. Oh, Get ready. Wow. And I got, I was lucky. I got to go to the Broadway Theater and I saw King Kong. You are so I fancy. didn't meet him, but I saw him. He's <laughs> big. He jumps. He's amazing. Well, there's he a preview. Sing. There's he a preview sing. for the ages. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And a stage star announced some solo shows. So we'll all be going. Or I'll be going. Okay. I'll well, we're going. all going to be going because we're we all going. love Rachel York. <gasps> She's great. Yes. She's gorgeous. Up. And she's singing one of my favorite Ryan pop songs. Ryan just put his hands to his heart. Oh, over ch- heels. clutch his heart. I love when Ryan clutches his heart. <laughs> it's always special when Ryan has a moment. Uh, she's going to do some solo concerts. She, uh, she obviously is still in Head Over Heels, but she is doing... I think she's singing Heaven is a Place on Earth, which I love. So anyway, good. I'm just sorry. I just had to throw that uh, in. It's this, a Belinda Carlisle song, by the way. It's not a Go-Go song. That's correct. There sorry. are a few... Sorry. Belinda songs in Head Over Heels. Sorry. Anyway, Two. Green Room 42 on November 18th at 7 o'clock. That's this a great room. It's a great room. It's at the hotel. That's at the hotel. Thank mm-hmm. you. She's paying There's tribute no to cover. the. She's paying tribute to the glorious women who have helped her, sh- ha- who have helped shape her career, including Julie Andrews, who of course she was in. Victor Victoria, man, she got snubbed. She, okay, let me talk to you about the nineties. I knew you had the yes, year Victor yeah. Victoria opened. Which was. Ninety. I don't know. Five ish. Okay. Rachel York should have won a Tony Award, and she didn't even get nominated. I'm sorry, I'm still Maybe better. she'll yeah. cry on st- at the Green Room 42 <laughs> about that. She also... Um, Who's... She um, Alex Newell comes to mind. She oh, wrote it uh, out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Ouch, mm-hmm. It happens sometimes, kids. <laughs> Let me give you some of Rachel York's credits. Les Mis, City of Angels. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my the God. Scarlet she was, oh, she, she, was was Mallory, she was in the bed in the sheet. Sly Fox, Disaster, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Tickets now on sale. She did the Anything Goes tour, didn't she? Yeah, but these are Broadway credits. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. I mean, really. Yeah, go see her. She's fantastic. Yeah. So you could actually interview me or Ryan Lee Gilbert. How about Oh, Beth, it's (laughs) Ryan's day. You know that. It's fine with me. It's Ryan's day. So, uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone some fascinating facts about Ryan Lee Gilbert? I actually learned all of this stuff today, which is so exciting. So, guys, we have sweet Ryan Lee Gilbert in the studio with us today. He's our national editor, and he, we're celebrating his sixth work anniversary, so we're super excited. He studied acting at American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. Did you know that? But then he decided to switch gears, and he has a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Connecticut. He worked at some newspapers, the longest-running newspaper in Connecticut. He worked there. Uh, but then he became a reporter at Broadway.com in 2012. He got promoted in 2014 to become the Nationals editor. You know, he's our go-to man for Broadway across America, for tours. He knows it all. Follow him on social media at It's Me, RLG. It's great. It's kind of like the notorious RLG. Oh, I like wow. it. It's really good. Okay, and leave all your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Paul and Ryan. Yay! Wow. Look at Hello, this. Sarah. Hello there. <laughs> so nice for, to finally meet you. Thank you for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. I feel like I've sat across from you many times. I know. It feels past. like we know each other so well already. But, <laughs> yeah. How the heck are you? I'm great. Happy anniversary. Thank you so Did you much. know it was your anniversary today before we all gave you pie? Was I did not. No, I this morning I discovered it because you know Facebook memories, it tells oh, you. So I memories. saw that I had written a status like six years ago saying, first day at work and I got to meet Cheyenne Jackson. <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> what was he doing? He was here? doing the performers. That right. play with that's Henry right. Winkler and yeah, Ari yeah, Grainer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. That I'm was my very wow, first day Wow, that was work. your first day. Yep. They had their press event at the Hard Rock Cafe. Right, okay. Classic. It, took place, it was like the porn industry. And then yeah, and was, Emmy yeah. winner Henry Winkler. Ha- Emmy winner yeah. Henry Winkler, yeah. It was a yeah. big first day. Well, yeah. that was a good first day. It was. It was fun. Yeah. And how have all the days been since? How are They've you? They've gotten better and better every yes. single day. No, of course. I. They're great. I love it. It's... I- I love that you started as an actor. Julie Taymor speaks of your acting. <laughs> I know, that's right. That's right. I was in a Julie Taymor film when she came here to talk about... It's a about little one. When she, uh, across, across the universe. The <laughs> yeah. No, I yes. was an extra. Um, and the film, we filmed that on my birthday that year. I don't quite remember what year it was, um, but it was my birthday, mm-hmm. um, which is in December. It's December 2nd. But it took place in the spring. 
So I was dressed in spring clothing in the middle of December, freezing my butt off. Um, and there were like equity actors that had access uh -huh. to like space warmers How, oh, about and you? food. And I did not have access to those mm -hmm. things. And I said, you know what? I don't think this is for me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if this, I don't know if this is going to be my future. And so I, uh, yeah, I went back to school, went to UConn and journalism. Yeah. So and like a year ago when um, Julie Tamar was here, I made her. Me I, I said you have to meet one of your stars. <laughs> That's right. Miss Tamar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was great. And she like remembered that day. Like yeah, that I was. She was really cool. Yeah. yeah. She was awesome. She's very nice. Um. Yeah, I remember when you came in uh, to interview for your job. You mm -hmm. start. You were hired as a reporter. I was. We had a, a team of mm -hmm. reporters, and uh, I, I grew up in the Hartford area, and you right. had come from the Hartford Current, which is a very respected newspaper mm -hmm. in, in Connecticut and everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah. yeah, so that, that was sort of like your legit, not, not everyone who works here like sort of has such a legit journalistic, right? you know, in that way, like working from a yeah. newspaper. Right, and coming yeah. Here. Yeah, no, that was the whole, it was interesting going to like taking journal journalism classes at that time because like newspapers were just beginning their, um, like what? bankruptcies, okay, you know, yes. like where things had to like step in and buy them to save the newspaper industry yeah. and all of that. And I remember being like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, I hope that this is a field, seeing as how I've given up the acting, I hope the journalism right. is something that, you know, will stick with. But um, but yeah, no, Broadway.com was already, you know, such a known entity and had already like pioneered so much in terms of web journalism mm -hmm. and being on the internet. And I was very fortunate, but yeah, I was trained newspapers. I only had like one class that was called like online journalism, <laughs> which you know, which is this foreign concept. Um, but it like had a, it made us all create Twitter accounts and you yeah. know, like it, to sort of learn how to write in a blog, like for WordPress. WordPress. I remember, yes. yeah, that was. It. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, no newspaper background. It was a lot of fun, and I worked with Frank Rizzo. Yeah. Who I know you know it's as fantastic. well. Yeah, he's like a legend over at the yeah, Harvard Current. The theater critic over there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and he, he was, when I told him, I was like, oh, I'm applying for this job at Broadway.com. He was like, oh, you'll love it over there. Paul Wontorek. <laughs> like, he, he knew. Thanks, he, Frank. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mr. Rizzo. I, <laughs> I grew up reading Frank Rizzo. I mean, yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. He would review, like, all the, the national tours that would come, which was really cool, and everything yeah. at the Hartford stage. Yeah. So that's a good transition into what, what you, now you're the national editor. You got I promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of created the role for you. Like there In this a, way, yeah. 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 Um, because, let's sort of explain this for people. So... Broadway.com is owned by the John Gore organization. John yeah. Gore is a producer, um, and he's a lot of things. He's had a very yeah. long career in investor and shows and produces a lot of theater. And he also, the company also owns Broadway Across America, right? which is a, uh, a company that produces tours mm -hmm. and manages, what, seasons? Manages. Around. Sort of explain, explain about the, the touring world and how... Yeah. Networks. So essentially, we have lots of theaters across the country in different cities that we invest in. And so some so Broadway across America, you know, produces these shows and pays for them to come to these theaters. Right. Um, they kind of do the whole thing. And, you know, sometimes Broadway across America has more risk in something as opposed to the show. But that's all like contract stuff. That's, you know, not very interesting. That's not really what we uh, work no. on. No. Yeah. So we it's sort of our job to let people promote these shows for people people know what these shows are about, mm -hmm. why they'll like them, um, introduce them to the actors and the well, creators that do Because there's that. a lot of, you know, when shows hit the road, uh, we know them very well, but people right. across America <laughs> might not know, yeah. you know that much about these shows. And obviously we have a lot of tools to help Right. Inform people. Step one, like from my job, is education. Like right. my job is to educate people across the country where these shows are headed, what this show is about, why we think they'll like mm -hmm. it, why it's worth checking out. And then once we sort of establish that, then it's then me introduce you to the, the cast of the show. So we yeah. do so many fun videos, including Live at Five, but we have them in for music videos. Yeah. We do one on one interviews. And then once the show is kind of on the road, we like to keep everything fresh on the pages. So we right. do additional interviews or you we've gone traveling to cities yeah. to do like character studies with the actors and shows yeah so ryan's like paying attention to all of these like how many markets do we 41 intimately mm -hmm. manage okay, okay. Yep. in canada and america canada correct. and america yep and uh so you he's like paying attention to like which shows which tours are starting where this week and getting the news up about that and then getting features up for because we're creating content for all of these markets 
And then it's sort of a broader sense also promoting the tours to the larger Broadway.com readership. And this is a very busy time of year for you because Crazy. all <laughs> yeah. of the tours are rehearsing in New York right, right now, now or just yeah. leaving. Or just like left. The cast yeah. of, um, who was just here? So Dear Evan Hansen they just left like a week they ago. They just left. Saigon just left. Right, so they're, yeah. they're all leaving now and starting their tours. So the last month or two, Ryan's been creating a lot of content, doing a lot of interviews, producing a lot of video segments. Which, yeah. which you'll be seeing. A lot of them you haven't seen yet. But right. Mm -hmm. They're all in the can. Now in we the just, can. <laughs> they're in the can. <laughs> Frank now, Rizzo teach you that term, <laughs> in the can. <laughs> That's right. No, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, because also there's, you know, with all of these like local markets that we go to, sometimes, a lot of the time there are actors from these cities that are part right. of these tours. So we try to cover Hometown own, heroes. Hometown <laughs> heroes, of course. Yeah. So we try to cover, cover local angles as well uh -huh. as the big picture stuff. Um, but I was a kid that fell in love with Broadway and musicals because of national tours. That's right. all, you know, that's how I went and saw theater. Yep. Um, things would come to like the Bushnell in, Hartford, in Hartford. Connecticut. That's in right. Hartford. I saw Time Daily do Gypsy, pre Broadway. <laughs> right? yep. Pre Broadway. Or the Gold Speed. You know, so like that's how I would see shows. Um, and yeah, I realized their importance. And so then when I transitioned into this role, we decided to um, make it a little bit different. You know, we tried to, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave the stuff that I was doing for Broadway.com, right. you know, as a reporter, um, but now I had these new responsibilities, and so I, I kind of act as this conduit between all the creative fun stuff that we do, yeah. and then helping mm -hmm. to promote these shows on the road. Yeah, because Ryan's on the Broadway.com show, mm -hmm. he's obviously on Live at Five, not always as a guest. Right. Um, <laughs> Just a, m a merging of the two worlds. And you know, you do the Broadway Cross America Report. I do, That's with Julie video. James. Julie James of Sirius yeah. XM, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, sort of another partnership. So yeah, you, you do a lot of different things. I try. What yeah. do you love about it? What do I love about it? It's always interesting. I'm never bored at work. That's, yeah. you know, there's just, I mean, not that I would be, <laughs> you know, otherwise, mm -hmm. but there's just always something new. And it's, uh, my favorite part is getting to know people before they, you know, either hit it big or, you know, have, you know, when you get to know them early on in their careers yeah. and they remember you and you see which ones, you know, remember your name when they come back. It's just, it's cool to be able to invest in someone like that and mm -hmm. see what they become. And, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. And they're all, tour people are always so eager. You know, mm -hmm. they're always so, it's new for them. They, th this is a part of their dream coming true. Right. And I get to kind of just feed off of that excitement right. a lot. Ryan a lot also reads a lot of books, <laughs> watches a lot of TV shows, TV, yeah. and sees a lot of movies at Alamo Draft House. Yes. Well, I'm, look, I'm a cultural sponge. Yes, I don't pop like, culture. Yeah, I like t t you know, to experience a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I, I do my best, but it's very daunting. I love it. Is it, is it crazy <laughs> to think you've been at a job for six years? It is. It was a or big... Or sometimes does it feel like... 60 years or no no it was it was <laughs> such a big moment for me having you know giving up given up realizing that that acting wasn't for me kind of investing in a new skill mm -hmm. journalism and then hoping i would be able to you know find a way to marry all of that and i mean this was the perfect you know way to do all of that uh, take, taking something i had a passion for but didn't want to participate in that way and now being able to write about it and experience mm -hmm. it and help promote it um, it was a dream come true, and it was a first big, as I've talked about before, it gave me this this job, this opportunity has given me the, the chance to have all the other things in my life. It's given mm -hmm. me a home in New York City. It's given me a chance to stay here mm -hmm. and meet, you know, who is now my husband. I know, you just, I, I was going to say, you, you, you <laughs> very conveniently said marry all of your stuff. I was like, all right, Ryan, we know. Ryan got married. <laughs> Tyler, we like Tyler. Hi, but Tyler. I'm sure he's watching. He is. Sure he is. He yeah, is. It, it gave, this job gave me my life. And yeah. that, which is just a very cool and lovely thing and still, you know, gives me chills. Oh, it's a lot of fun. How nice. But yeah, well. A, a New York Live. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Do people have any questions for RLG? Oh, yeah. It's me, RLG. Jeez. Notorious Great, RLG. Name, Thank you. <laughs> uh, Madison asks, what is your favorite part of being in the theater media field? My favorite part about it. Um, I would say, I think the theater world is just very special, which, I mean, you can attest to as mm -hmm. well. It's very, it's unique. It's part of the entertainment industry, but there's such a family feeling towards the theater world here. Mm -hmm. There are, 
as I was saying earlier, you you run into a lot of the same people all the time. Yeah. So you invest in people and you get to know them and you, you're rooting for them as they have big things happen. Like you, I've been working here for six years and I work with a lot of the same people still that I was working mm -hmm. with on day one. And I just, I really like that family aspect. I really feel that I've invested in, you know, these, these, these people and these shows. And plus, yeah, like it's, there's nothing better than coming across a show like Waitress, where oh, I right, just, right. I love Waitress. <laughs> right. where I truly just love it. And, you know, now I get to, like, it's still here on Broadway, but I get to work on the national tour aspect of it. Right. So it's, I get to keep a show that I love in my life all the time and it's funny when you get to see something like grow into what it what you know you see yeah. an early performance of something and now you know right. it's still cooking later like that's a it's a very hands-on field still cooking it's still oh. cooking i could use that poster still, <laughs> still bacon still bacon still <laughs> bacon um elise asks what show made you fall in love with broadway made me fall in love with broadway um I was a big Hairspray fan. <laughs> I think Hairspray, Hairspray still feels like the perfect musical mm -hmm. to me. I just, it was, I, those songs are incredible. Harvey Firestein was just unbelievable yeah. in that show. Yeah. Um, but of course, Marissa was, I mean, that whole cast yeah, to it. Her. Yes, yeah. Tony Award winner. Yes. Um, and Big Brother. <laughs> and Big Brother, yeah. why not? Um, yeah, that, that show really just kind of like fired on all cylinders for me. And I, I went and saw it a couple of times. And I, yeah, like Andrew Rannells, I got to say. It was just one of those uh -huh. like really cool shows that everybody loved that kind of just did everything right. And mm -hmm. I, I'll never forget going to see that show. It was a big Aww. deal for me. Love that. Uh, Brielle says that she's studying marketing theater right now, and what steps should she take to get involved in the Broadway media industry? Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, People are gunning after our job. <laughs> she's yeah, going to write exactly. it down. So, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as we've been sort I'm a big believer in training. I think training mm -hmm. is very, very important. There is. You know, so much of the job is fun, and a lot of it, you know, as you, we, we kind of try out new things here all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think having a really good foundation of basics is really important. Knowing mm -hmm. how to, um, knowing how to ask questions that probably, you know, aren't the same ones that the same actors get asked right. every right. single time. Yeah. Like finding a new way to ask questions and new questions to ask. How to. Like, you know, when I have, you know, editors, the Beth and Paul edit my work, being able to send them something and they don't have to, you know, make changes, that it's, it's all written, it can be, you know, published as is. Um, and just, yeah, like asking, asking for advice all the time. Like I, when I, when I first started, I didn't know what a CMS was, you know, mm -hmm. like our system, but Content I didn't, management you, system. like I didn't That's know what that was. That's how we enter stories. Right. Like yes. I didn't know what that was and I didn't know how to Photoshop, you know, something really well. And just being like, can you, can you show me how to do this? Can you show me how mm -hmm. to do this? And just getting, getting good at it. And on my time off, getting better at HTML, you know, mm -hmm. like all of that, just that little stuff. Um, is the best way to go about it. And then keep keep a lookout on sites that post job openings. You know, like when Playbill has a job opening, Broadway.com has a job opening. Like mm -hmm. you you keep an eye on that stuff and mm -hmm. you, you, I mean, Caitlin Moynihan, you're, you know, relatively yeah. new to the team. Mm -hmm. It's just applying and, you know, sh showing you those, the people hiring, why you stand out a little bit, what's a little bit different about you. Mm -hmm. so. And then when you come for your job interview. Mm-hmm. Beth is laughing. <laughs> 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 Beth, Beth and I have done a lot of interviews together. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to know like what company you're visiting. Yeah. yeah, that's the visiting. Other, for sure. Get to oh know no. what they do and sort of <laughs> yeah. get, you know oh be no. smart. Yeah, if I I was a confidence is great, but you also want to be really smart about what you're walking into. Right, yeah. absolutely. Like I when I when I applied at Broadway.com, I came in knowing as much as I could about what Broadway.com did. Yeah. So that when you ask, like, what's your favorite thing that we do? You Which, know by the way, getting... stumps a lot of people. Yeah, right? That like, question <laughs> stumps <laughs> so many people. Right? Like, and that's, like, I, I'm, like fresh faces. I remember just, I love Broadway.com fresh faces. Uh -huh. And I love what they've evolved into, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're different than they were then. But like that, I, I remember just loving those. Yeah. Yeah. So know, the, know where you're applying, <laughs> I guess. Oh, is, gosh. Is <laughs> mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> what else, Caitlin? Yikes. Okay. <laughs> and I told this joke before, but when Caitlin on. came in for her job interview, I was like, there's no way she's getting the job. We already have two Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. And then she walked out and I was like, crap. <laughs> three Caitlin. Three Caitlin. Success. Three three. <laughs> or is it that I saw Angels in America twice <laughs> in the span That's of right. four days? Wow. Oh, well, it's fine. It's a lot. Um, oh, okay. Elise asked, what's your favorite TV show to binge watch? Wow. <laughs> such a hard this is a, question. This is a stumper. <laughs> such a hard question. Well, I, as, I like a lot of TV shows, but, and you know that, uh, my favorite TV show is Stranger Things. Oh, Stranger right. Stranger Things mm -hmm. is unbelievable. Um, well, you have to wait another Kyle's, year to see that. Kyle's snickering because he's not a big fan of Stranger Things. Kyle. And I've said oh, I don't even want to Kyle. listen to anyone. If you have a negative thought about Stranger Things, I don't care. We don't have time it. for that. I don't, I don't want to hear it. Um, but also, so yeah, Stranger Things, Ongoing is my favorite. Have but you bought any of the merch at Target? There's a lot of merch. <laughs> lots of merch, yes. <laughs> we, uh, lots and lots of, we have like the Funko Pops, everything. Well, speaking um, of Stranger Things, like yeah. that, that's a good example of someone who started on Broadway. Yes, uh, Dustin. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, Glenn Maser Maserati? No, I'm not even talking Gat about him. Gaten. I'm talking about Cher. David Harbour. Oh, oh, David Harbour. David yeah. Harbour. Like David Harbour. Yeah. Who's like now blown up that like started in, yeah. like, on Broadway. And Absolutely. I really wanted him to win the Emmy Award this year, too. I'm sorry. But he didn't. I'm sorry. They don't get enough love on the Emmys. Um, and then The Office. The Office oh, is ah, kind a classic. of like. The American yeah, Office? The American okay. Office. Yes. Yes. Jim and Pam are very important to oh. who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as as uh, we had a little party themed for <laughs> the, the Jim and Pam wedding here. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Okay, let's do one more question. Uh, oh, okay, this one might be a longer answer. But George asks, how do you guys choose which segments to keep when you're editing through your work? Like Broadway.com show or any of your one-on-ones and oh, things like that. Like um, to sort of like keep aside yeah. for me to... Yeah. Um, wow. It's... Uh, I mean, there are some like I've had some like dream come true moments of like people that I've been able to talk to, talk to, and mm -hmm. get to know. But then there are things like I remember interviewing like Ben Platt when he was, you know, before when he had just come into like Book of Mormon, right. and like that was a that was one of those things I had seen him in Pitch Perfect, and he had you, people had said great things about him in Book of Mormon in Chicago. So you kind of knew. Ben Platt was this person who was going to, you know, go mm -hmm. places yeah. as we've seen. And so like that one I have tucked away to remember like in Gray Henson, we just had Gray Henson in here not too long ago for Live at Five. And he was like, you know where you were my first interview ever, Aww. which is such a like, that's really cool. Like that makes it special. Yeah. And Alex Sharp, Curious Incident, like you knew he was going to do amazing things. So it's, there are just ones that as you read back, like I can always tell if I've really liked something I've put up. If every once in a while I'll go onto the site and I'll just find it and I'll like reread it and I'll just be like, Oh, what a great moment this was when Aww. I got to write about like all Laura this. Laura and the glass menagerie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I, when we first started here, we used to do these things called backstories, which remember like we would trace the whole history of a show as if a revival was opening. Yeah. It was a big, it was like, it was like a research project. I know we start doing them again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like they were a lot of fun they were a lot of work but they were a lot of fun in those it was very easy to be proud of because it was That's like true. writing a like a thesis on a show it's um, like a paper so yeah there's it's an un you know it's i don't know there's just a little there's a charge to certain things that you totally. write where mm -hmm. you're like and this one's special Aww. cool all right well thank you so much thank ryan you. lee thank gilbert you so much. thank you for thank you for six years Oh, thank you for giving me you. this opportunity. We love having you here. Uh, you guys are going to keep seeing more of this guy. And mm -hmm. you check out all the like page or pages for all these different markets. Yes, and please. On the road, yeah. Broadway across America, you can sort of see what, what Ryan does beyond the obvious sort of on-camera things that you see him do all the time. Mm -hmm. And only six years, many more to go. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. Be sure to listen to this interview in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Linda Muggleston of My Fair Lady.